The basics of simplifying fractions relies on an understanding of a golden rule and that is that you divide both the top and bottom number, the numerator and the denominator by the same value. In other words, you do the same to the top and the bottom. Now simplifying fractions should be simple as the title implied and a lot of people don't feel it is because they worry they need to know their entire times tables. That's not true. In fact, there are only three basic rules that you need to follow and become confident with, plus perhaps one on at the end. Let's explore those three. So the three rules all require a recognition of a pattern. Now that pattern recognition is to do with the last digit in the values. Let me give you an example. If I were to divide by 10, both top and bottom numbers must end in zero. And it's one that we will recognize from school. Something like 30 over 350, for example, we just simply cancel the zeros. Cancelling the zeros is the same as dividing by 10. And in this case, that would give us 3 over 35. 3 35ths is the same fraction as 30 over 350 in that it has the same value. They're known as equivalent fractions. Let's look at another one. Dividing by 2 is when both top and bottom values must be even. So for example something like 16 over 50. Now we can't cross the zero off the bottom because the top number doesn't have a zero. That would violate our golden rule. But we can half top and bottom. In this case we can do it in our heads. That would be 8 over 25. Now of course in actual exercises on simplifying fractions you can sometimes simplify further still. I'm just looking at one stage and picking out uh, rather easy to do fractions for illustrations. Let's look at the third and final straightforward pattern recognition rule and that is divide by 5. That is when both top and bottom number, the numerator and the denominator, are in the 5 times table. In other words, if they both end in 0 or 5. An example might be 10 over 35 and we could either from knowing our times tables or counting on our fingers work out that that was 2 over 7. Okay so there are three basics. Now it doesn't cover all values, for example that doesn't let us in for dividing by 9 or 6, but it does help us with several others. There's one other I'd like to show you and that requires a different pattern to recognise, that is the divide by 3 rule. The divide by 3 rule is where you look at the numbers top and bottom and you add the digits together. If those digits come to a multiple of 3, then 3 itself will go into that value. Let me show you with an example. Look at 27 over 51. Clearly our basic 3, our favourite 3 divided by 10, 2 and 5 will not work. Now 27 you might recognise as being in the 3 times tables but we can confirm that the digit 2 and the digit 7 add up to 9 and 9 in the 3 times table. So I know that 3 goes into 27. That adding the digits doesn't tell you the answer. It might by fluke but you still would normally have to go and work it out. Look at 51. Very few of us would simply recognise it's in the 3 times table. Still less of us would know what the answer was. But by adding the digits, 5 and 1 gives in a 6, we can instantly make that judgement that 3 goes in. If I go ahead and work it out, it comes out to me 9 over 17. This last one illustrates another point, and that is simplifying a fraction, each step, is a two-step process. Step 1 is deciding what to do, what should I divide by, what number goes into top and bottom and step two is going ahead and doing it. Sometimes you can just do it in your head like with the halving or crossing off notes and sometimes in this case you have to go in think about it and actually perhaps work it out separately on a bit of paper but either way it is a two-step process. Okay I reckon that's enough for now. So there we have our illustration of simplifying fractions our three plus one our four rules and I think you should now look at some uh, worked examples to help you consolidate that knowledge. Thank you.